Sya Gopi Jana Vallabha Girivaradhari Yashodhanandana Vrajajana Ranjana Yashodhanandana Vrajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tiravanachari Yamuna Tiravanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjavi Hari Jaya Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Varadhari Yashodhanandana Vrajajana Ranjana Yamunati Ravanachari Yamunati Ravanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjavi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjavi Hari Jaya Krishna Balaram, Jaya Krishna Balaram, Krishna Balaram, Jaya Krishna Balaram. Jaya Gauranitai, Jaya Gauranitai, Gauranitai, Jaya Gauranitai. Jaya Jaya Prabhupada, 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 Prabhupada. Jaya Mishnapad Paramahansa Parivraja Gatariya Shrotara Shata Shri Shimad is Divine Grace. Esi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shri Ila Prabhupada Ki Jai Jai Mishnapad Paraman Saparivraja Gatari Ashtottara Sata Shri Shri Madhis Divine Grace Shri Ila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Ananta Koti Vaishnavrinda Ki Jai Prem Chakaho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadari Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Grantha Raj Shri Mad Bhagavatam Ki Jai Shri Shri Krishna Balarama Ki Jai Shri Shri Gornitai Ki Jai Hare Krishna Mahamantra Ki Jai, Jagat Guru Sila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Nitai Gaur Premanande Hari Hari Bol. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Reading from Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 3, Chapter number 23 Text number 2 
विश्वेण आत्मा शौचन विश्वेणात्मशन विश्वेणात्मशन गौरवेण दमेन च गौरवेण दमेन च गौरवेण दमेन च शुश्रूषया सौहृद शुश्रूषया सौहृद शुश्रूषया सौहृद वाचा मधुरया च भो वाचा मधुरया च भो वाचा मधुरया च भो विश्वेणात्मशन गौरवेण दमेन च शुश्रूषया सौहृद वाचा मधुरया च भो विश्वेणात्मशन गौरवेण दमेन च शुश्रूषया सौहृद वाचा मधुरया च भो विश्वेणात्मशन गौरवेण दमेन च शुश्रूषया सौहृद वाचा मधुरया च भो विश्वेण विंटिमसि आत्मशन विथ प्यूरीटी ऑफ मैंड एंड बॉडी गौरवेण विथ ग्रेट प्रस्पेक्ट दमेन विथ कंट्रोल ऑफ द सेंस च एंड शुश्रूषया विथ सर्विस सौहृद विथ लव वाच With words, Madhuraya, sweet, cha, and bho ho, ho vidura. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace Sri La Prabhupad. Ho vidura, Devahuti served her husband with intimacy and great respect, with control of the senses, with love and with sweet words. Kindly repeat, Ho vidura, Devahuti served her husband. with intimacy and great respect with control of the senses with love and with sweet words purport by shri la prabhupad <clears throat> here two words are very significant devahuti served her husband in two ways vishrambhena and gauravena these are two important processes in serving the husband or the supreme personality of god Vishrambhena means with intimacy, and Gauravena means with great reverence. The husband is a very intimate friend. Therefore, the wife must render service just like an intimate friend, and at the same time, she must understand that the husband is superior in position, and thus she must offer him all respect. A man's psychology and woman's psychology are different, as constituted. by bodily frame 
A man always wants to be superior to his wife, and a woman, as bodily constituted, is naturally inferior to her husband. Thus, the natural instinct is that the husband wants to post himself as superior to the wife, and this must be observed. Even if there is some wrong on the part of the husband, the wife must tolerate it, and thus there will be no misunderstanding between husband and wife. Vishrambhena means with intimacy, but it must not be familiarity that breeds contempt. According to the Vedic civilization, a wife cannot call her husband by name. In the present civilization, the wife calls her husband by name, but in Hindu civilization, she does not. Thus, the inferiority and superiority complexes are recognized. The main a wife has to con- learn to control herself, even if there is a misunderstanding. Sauhurudayana vacha madhuraya means always desiring good for the husband and speaking to him with sweet words. A person becomes agitated by so many material contacts in the outside world. Therefore, in his home life, he must be treated by his wife with sweet words. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purport. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Jnanan Janachalakaya Chakshuran Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Namavo Mishnu Padaya Krishna Prishaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhaktivedanta Swamin Nitinamine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pasatya Deshatarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaurabhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Mukam Karoti Vachalam Pangum Langhayate Girim Yat Kripatamaham Mande Shri Gurum Dinataranam <coughs> So this verse is a continuation of the previous verse. The previous verse, it is described that Devahuti, after her parents had departed, after her marriage to Kardamumani, she understood the desires of her husband, Kardamumani, and served him constantly with great love. Just like the example given was that of who? Whose example was given? Parvati Devi serves Lord Shiva. Forgotten. (laughs) So, and uh, not only did she serve him constantly with great love, it is also mentioned here, Vishrambhena, along with uh, Vishrambha means great respect, reverence. She continued to serve him constantly with great reverence. Atma Shauchena, with uh, cleanliness of mind and purity of mind and body in her mind and in her body in her words in every manner she kept herself clean and uh, rendered service to her husband kardamumani and shushushaya with uh, <clears throat> with uh, great respect she served him sauhrudena with uh, love and uh, Madhuraya Vacha, with uh, sweet words. So in this manner, she rendered service to her husband, Kardamumani. Prabhupada explains in the purport that this example set by Devahuti is to be followed by all the people who follow the Varnashrama Dharma. Whenever we have to serve a superior, whether it is a husband or a father or a spiritual master or it is the Supreme Personality of God Himself. The service has to be rendered Vishrambhena Gauravena. It has to be rendered with great respect as well as with great intimacy. So, sorry, Vishrambhena means with intimacy and Gauravena means with great respect. So, <coughs> the service is rendered not just with 
respect and reverence alone but with intimacy also intimacy comes by developing a loving relationship with a person whenever we serve the spiritual master or the supreme personality of god it we have to serve them with great intimacy intimacy means we feel for what they want their desires when we are very intimate with somebody else we are very uh, careful or very thoughtful about the other person's desires suppose there is somebody who is very dear to us maybe our parents or our siblings or somebody like that what do we do we are always thinking how to satisfy their desires this is natural and uh, the, by uh, by always thinking and carrying out the desires of the other person we are being intimate with that person this is called intimacy which arises out of a loving relationship at the same time that intimacy cannot should not become familiarity breeds contempt that care we have to take in the service of the spiritual master as well as the supreme personality of god it that is why one of the offenses in chanting the holy name of the lord is guru sho naramatihi to think that the guru is an ordinary person and to disobey his instructions this is a great offense against the holy name what is the connection chanting the holy name is one thing and your relationship with your spiritual master is another thing so how if you disrespect the guru the spiritual master how does it become an offense to the holy name because the holy name is delivered to us by the spiritual master through the guru shishya parampara therefore our chanting of the holy name is not independent it is dependent on the guru's kripa that he is delivering us he is giving us the adhikara the authority the right to chant krishna's holy name it's not that anybody and everybody can chant krishna's holy name no krishna does not allow that of course anybody can chant but what is the benefit he will get if our goal of life is to go back to god at by chanting krishna's holy name that can happen only when we chant that holy name receiving it from a guru we get the authority to chant that holy name and from that chanting of the holy name with authority we get the right we get a claim on developing krishna prema otherwise it will become just punya karma there are so many people chanting so many mantras nowadays it be, it's become a fashion put on a cd and uh, somebody is singing gayatri and you are hearing that and you are also singing along and uh, somebody is singing some other mantra and you are also singing along neither that person who has sung that dvd of uh, different mantras or different names of god or or uh, the gayatri mantra or whatever neither he has qualification nor the person who is hearing also has any qualification so the 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 uh, generally people in kaliyuga they think that they have a right automatically they have a right over everything that is why when we speak of guru especially in the modern age they say why should i go to god through somebody i will have a direct connection with god why should i need somebody to go through that is that is actually arrogance because if we want to really establish a connection with god if you want to establish a connection with the supreme lord krishna then we have to understand how to establish that connection from krishna how krishna wants to establish that connection with us we have to understand just like suppose i want to see the prime minister of the country today he is my prime minister also he is the prime minister of all the citizens of india so i have a right to see him now just because i am a citizen of india and he is my prime minister i cannot barge into his office like that hey hello hi narendra modi i just wanted to see you and say hi that's why i walked in <laughs> can you do that you cannot do that you will immediately be stopped you will not be allowed to enter the building at all first the security will stop you at the main gate who asked you to come here why did you come here no i wanted to come so i come free country democratic country i is my prime minister i want to see today morning i felt like saying uh, good morning to him so i came will the security allow you he will think this fellow something is <laughs> he is up to something better put him in jail and interrogate him <laughs> you will be in lot of trouble 
So if you want to meet the Prime Minister, there is a protocol, there is a way, there is a certain approach to uh, approach and ask, request for uh, uh, an appointment. And just like that, you will not get an appointment also. You need to be qualified. There needs to be some purpose. There needs to be some reason. It's not at all easy to meet the Prime Minister of the, or the President of the country. And Prime Minister or President of the country, what is he? Just for a period of five years or six years or some temporary period, he is, he is the chief executive of some country or some small country or nation on this earthly planet, which is just one small planet within the entire universe. And the universe is just like one small seed of mustard in a bag of mustard seeds. There are so many innumerable universes. So for, for an insignificant Prime Minister or President of a country, if you want to meet, it's so difficult. So imagine establishing connection with the Supreme Personality of God. It's not all that easy. So that is why Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur also said, do not try to see God, try to act in such a way that the God wants to see you. So if you act in such a way that it catches the attention of the person, then it's very easy. Like for example, although for you and me it, is, it may be impossible to meet the Prime Minister, but what happens is on Independence Day, the Prime Minister personally meets some people who have done acts of bravery. They have saved some people. They did some heroic act. The Prime Minister will call them on Independence Day. And in front of everybody, he will give him a medal and he will congratulate him and he will shake his hand, all those things. So for that person who is receiving that medal, he did not have to try to fix, a, fix an appointment with the Prime Minister at all. He did something which caught the attention of the Prime Minister and the Prime Minister said, I want to meet him. Then what happens is the whole machinery, the whole apparatus, government machinery becomes immediately active and they will enable the meeting between the person and the Prime Minister. In a similar manner, if we act in such a way, instead of trying to see Krishna ourselves, instead of trying to establish our connection with God ourselves directly, if we act in such a way that God will want to see us, then it's very easy. So how do we act in such a way that Krishna will want to see us? For that, you need to learn from a person who knows Krishna's mind, what Krishna likes, what will attract Krishna's attention, that somebody has to tell us. Who will tell us that? That is the spiritual master. And the spiritual master, the foremost way in Kali Yuga, how the spiritual master establishes, re-establishes the connection between us and Krishna is through the chanting of the holy name. So Krishna does not give his holy name freely to anybody and everybody. Krishna gives it to only somebody who is recommended by the pure devotee spiritual master. So whomever Prabhupada accepts, whomever Prabhupada accepts as his disciple, Prabhupada has been given that power of attorney by Krishna to give his holy name to him. So if we have to receive the holy name, if we have to have the adhikara, the authority, the right to chant the holy name, that right has to be given to us by the representative of Krishna. And uh, that representative of Krishna is the spiritual master. This is the system set up by Krishna himself. Emam parampara praptam, imam rajarshayo viduhu. No matter how great a person you are, you may be the king, you may be a great king of some, the entire planet, but still, if you want to approach me, you have to approach through the guru parampara. All your material achievements and accomplishments, and no matter how great a person you are in the, you are in the eyes of the world, in front of Krishna, if you have to approach him, you have to approach through a pure devotee only. So the spiritual master is the appointed representative of Krishna. The spiritual master has not ta taken the role of spiritual master upon himself, by himself. Not that Prabhupada said, oh, I, I, I'll become a spiritual master and he came and declared himself to be a spiritual master on his own. No. Krishna appointed Prabhupada. Krishna told Prabhupada, you go to the material world and act on my behalf as a spiritual master and liberate the conditioned souls. So, that is how the 
Srila Prabhupada has come to this world to act as our spiritual master on the orders of Krishna. No matter, no, no matter which Acharya it is, whether it is Ramanujacharya, Madhvacharya, whether it is uh, Nimbarka Acharya, all the Acharyas, they become Acharyas on the order of Krishna. They never claim to be Acharyas by themselves. They are never self-made. That is another fashion which has come about today. Anybody can become a self-made God-man. You have a little bit long beard and you wear a different kind of clothing and uh, you, you, you are able to talk nicely, you are a good orator and uh, you can uh, take people round in circles and circles with all your nice talk. People will say, oh, he is a God-man and he will have his own followers, he will have his ashram or mutt and all those kind of things. He will make a lot of money, he will run a few campaigns, earn a little, of, a little, little bit of uh, uh, this one praise from the people and uh, he'll, he'll be a, he will enjoy life. So these are self-made men. If you ask them who gave you the authority to become a spiritual master, they will have no answer. No, I became on my own. I don't... Uh, Krishna never approves of self-made godmen. This is the reality. And an Acharya, a guru, has to be a person who has been appointed by Krishna. And so naturally because he is, an, uh, he is a representative of Krishna, Sakshad Haritvena, when we look at the spiritual master, we have to treat him as good as Krishna. Spiritual master is not Krishna, but he is a representative of Krishna and therefore he has to be offered as much respect as we offer to Krishna. Prabhupada gives that wonderful example of a viceroy. When a viceroy comes to a country, then he is given as much respect as the queen or the king whom he is representing in the in the, in the British times, when British, when, the, when England was ruling over India, the Queen would not come to India, but the Viceroy would come. And when the Viceroy comes, everybody would welcome him exactly like welcoming the Queen. Why? Because he is representing the Queen. Similarly, the spiritual master, because he is representing Krishna, he has to be offered the same amount of respect. So, we have to serve the spiritual master with, with intimacy and with, uh, with purity of our mind and body, with great respect, with the control of the senses and with love and with sweet words we have to serve the spiritual master. This is the way to serve the spiritual master. So in the Vedic times the whole society was designed in such a way that anybody who wants to become a devotee of Krishna, anybody who wants to, uh, to progress spiritually the whole system, uh, the society was structured in such a, such a way that it would be very easy for them to find a spiritual master. In fact, one, be, one would not even have to find a spiritual master. The whole arrangement of the society was so nice that everybody would have a spiritual master in their life by default. In today's world, Kali Yuga, we have to search where is a spiritual master and we can get misled so many places. So it's very difficult to find a bona fide spiritual master in Kali Yuga. In the olden times, in the Vedic times, the, there would be some people who are designated who had to play the role of spiritual master as a natural duty towards their dependents. The husband, the father, the teacher in the school, the mother, all these people were natural spiritual masters for their dependents. The husband would naturally be the spiritual master for the wife. The father would be naturally the spiritual master for the children. The mother and the father would be spiritual ma masters for their children. So like this, all the people who are had any dependence under them, they would act as spiritual masters. Even Devatas would act as spiritual masters. The Prachetas, when they were going to worship Vishnu, Narayana, Lord Shiva appeared before them and instructed them how to worship Narayana. So even the Devatas would act as spiritual masters. This used to be the Vedic system. So it was in the Vedic system, in the Vedic times, the men were so highly qualified that naturally a woman, whenever she would marry somebody, that man had to be already highly qualified and, and trained in spirituality by following the process of brahmacharya and following the uh, living in the gurukala, getting trained formally under a spiritual master. 
So naturally, the man was so qualified, the wife would automatically have reverence and she would lovingly serve that person willingly. Just like we see in the case of Devahuti also. She was willingly, voluntarily, she accepted the service of Kardamomani. It's not that Kardamomani um, imposed upon her. The society was, uh, was forcing Devahuti that you have to serve. You have to be subordinate to him. No. Willingly, voluntarily, she did. Why? Because Kardamomani was so highly elevated spiritually. And we can see how in the upcoming verses also, the greatness of Kardamomani also. It's natural that whenever we, we have a relationship with a person who is very great, we will naturally have respect for that person. The person doesn't have to demand respect. He has to command respect. Which was what was in the case of Kardamomani. Kardamomani was not demanding respect from Devahuti, his wife. He commanded respect because of his spiritual position. In Kali Yuga, because the men are all so fallen, they are all so unqualified, naturally women feel, what is, why should I respect this man? After all, for, between me and him, what is the difference? There is no difference between me and him. He is also as fallen as I am fallen. So what is the big deal? Why should I respect him? So naturally, the, the, the women also start demanding that we have to be given equal respects. And the men, on the other hand, they are unqualified and they are expecting, no, my, uh, my wife should, my uh, children and my wife and all these people should uh, offer me respect. Why should they offer respect to you? You are totally unqualified. When you are unqualified, why should somebody respect you? You see, in the case of uh, uh, Gandhari and Dhritarashtra, Dhritarashtra, because he was unqualified, he did not follow the path of Dharma. Many times Gandhari went and questioned him. She spoke to him strongly, what are you doing? Why are you, uh, uh, this one, encouraging uh, Duryodhana? Why don't you reject him and accept the Pandavas? She openly went and uh, opposed Dhritarashtra. Why? Because Dhritarashtra was unqualified. Later on, of course, after all the battle of Kurukshetra got over, the Pandavas again got re-established by the instructions of Vidura, Dhritarashtra developed Vairagya. He gave up his home and went to the forest and became a sannyasi. At that time, Gandhari followed him and uh, she served him very nicely. Because he had elevated himself so naturally, she felt respect for him. So the respect she did not have for him when he was the king, she developed respect for him when he gave up his kingship and became a sannyasi in the forest. <laughs> you see? So respect does not come simply by becoming being a man or a husband or a father. One has to be qualified to command that respect. Today's parents also, they tell, children are not listening to us. They do whatever they want. Why will they listen to you? Because you know only one thing. You know how to earn money. That's all. So the, the children also know that. They have also gone to college and learned how to earn money. So why should they respect you? Unless the parents are highly qualified, the children will not respect. Unless the husband is highly qualified, the wife, uh, uh, husband is highly qualified, the wife will not respect. Unless the teacher is highly qualified, why should the students respect? You go to the today's colleges, what do they teach in the colleges? The teachers, they teach simply how to earn your livelihood, how to make money. And you look at the character of the teachers, they are no different from the students. The students also want to eat, drink, sleep and mate. The teachers are also doing that. Why should the students have respect for the teachers? If the teacher, the husband, the father, the mother, all these people are elevated spiritually. They have great qualities, spiritual qualities they have. They have the qualities of Vairagya. They have the quality of Jnana, knowledge of the Supreme Personality of God and Krishna. Knowledge that I am not the body, I am spirit, soul. And Damena, they have control over their senses. Automatically, everybody will respect. You will command the respect of everyone. This was... A, uh, this was a well understood fact in the Vedic civilization. So, the men being highly qualified in terms of vairagya, renunciation, detachment and control of their senses, naturally they commanded the respect of their wives. And both the, like, even Devahuti is not any less qualified. How did she serve uh, Kardamamuni, her husband? She served Damena. With, with full control over her senses and Atma Shauchena with purity of mind and body. She served him. So she was also highly qualified. 
So when both the husband or wife are qualified in terms of control of their senses and purity of their thoughts and actions, what happens? Children will automatically respect and follow what the parents say. The parents don't have to impose themselves upon them. So we have to understand these verses from the perspective of the of, of uh, the qualification, spiritual qualification of the personalities involved and then we will be able to understand all these uh, instructions which are given in the Bhagavatam. Today's people should not expect that the similar kind of relationships can exist in Kali Yuga. Unless of course the husband is a great pure devotee, naturally the wife will be subordinate and will be subservient to the husband. But otherwise people should not misuse this. Sometimes uh, uh, devotees, they, they tend to misunderstand. And when there is a husband and wife who are devotees, the husband tells, see, you are not following Prabhupada's instruction. You have to be subservient to me. You have to follow whatever I say. And husband is demanding something. Wife is not following. Both are devotees. It's, it's not like that. <laughs> First, you have to be qualified. We are ourselves struggling to control our senses and follow the four regulative principles and chant our uh, rounds of Hare Krishna Mahamantra without uh, thinking of anything else, without offenses. And we are expecting that uh, my partner, my wife, she should follow me. <laughs> These are all uh, unreasonable expectations. We should not uh, think like that. The, if, if, if we become qualified, automatically the people will respect. Why only wife? Everybody, the whole society will respect. So, so these instructions have to be taken uh, in uh, totality. We have to understand the qualifications of the persons involved. And uh, in, 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 although Prabhupada mentions here that wife would never call the husband by name. So Prabhupada in other places also says that in the Vedic civilization, the husband also would not call the wife by name. Both the husband would respect the wife, wife would respect the husband. So the wife would call the husband Prabhu and the husband would call the wife Devi. He will not call her by name. You will see even in uh, when Lord Shiva addresses Parvati also, he says, Oh Devi. So he refers to her like uh, even in the Vishnu Sahasranama it is said that uh, when uh, Parvati Devi questions Lord Shiva as to what is the shortest way, what is the shortcut, shortcut to chant the Vishnu Sahasranama, Lord Shiva says, Sri Rama Rama Rameti, Rame Rame Varanane. He refers to Parvati Devi, Varanana, O oh beautiful one, by simply chanting Lord Rama's name thrice, it is equivalent to chanting the whole Vishnu Sahasranama. So he refer, he did not call her by name. O oh Parvati, he did not call. He said, O oh beautiful one. So that shows even Lord Shiva respects his wife, Parvati. So respect is mutual. Everybody respected each other in, in the Vedic times. And because Karada Mumuni or Lord Shiva, they have the qualification to act as a spiritual master. They have the ability to guide spiritually their subordinates or their dependents. Therefore, they commanded respect. And uh, so therefore, we have to understand that the, for such highly qualified personalities, if there are some seeming faults or there is some, uh, the, the person uh, makes some mistake also, the person who is subordinate, he has to tolerate those mistakes. He should not give importance to those mistakes. So uh, this is true of anybody who is a spiritual authority. We may have a, a spiritual authority under whom we are do, uh, rendering service. Sometimes that authority may make some mistake. So we cannot become, uh, some minor mistake if, if it is there, then we cannot become overly critical about those things. We have to see how the devotee is uh, devotedly serving the spiritual master and his institution and his mission. And we have to give respect to him according to that. Of course, if somebody deviates completely, he starts disobeying Prabhupada's instructions, then it's a different matter. But otherwise, as long as the person is properly fixed up, even Vedic uh, uh, Shastras also say that the Manu Samhita also says that the woman should, the wife should follow the instructions of the husband as long as he has not fallen away from the path of Dharma. So even in the Vedic times, it was not that the wife has to blindly follow the husband. If the husband does not follow the Dharma, 
then the wife has the authority to reject that husband. This was there even in Vedic times. But in Kali Yuga, in Vedic times, because all the men were highly qualified, unqualified men were rare here and there. One Ravana was there, one Hiranyakashipu was there. But otherwise, by and large, everybody were highly qualified. So all the all the 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 general instruction was the wife should follow whatever the husband says, and with the understanding. Implicitly, the, it is understood that the husband has to be fixed up in following dharma. Dharma means dharma mtu sakshat bhagavat pranitam. Dharma is given by the Supreme Lord and acting for the pleasure of Krishna is actual dharma. So as long as the husband is, uh, is following the path of dharma, he is executing the instructions of Krishna. Until then, the wife has to uh, follow the instructions of the husband. So. Uh, such a qualified person, there is no harm in following the instructions of that person because ultimately, because that person is engaged totally in dedicated to serving Krishna and his instructions, by following those pe person's instructions, we will also progress spiritually. So these are were some of the considerations and also it is said in the Vedas that the when the husband is qualified like this and he is following the path of Dharma and the wife is serving the husband, properly, then automatically 50% of the spiritual progress, whatever accrues to the husband, goes to the wife. So, that way, we have to understand that it is the husband's duty to ensure that he follows the path of dharma so strictly that 50% of that credit goes to his wife. Then he can expect that the wife should serve him properly. Otherwise, if one is not qualified to give spiritual benefit to one's dependent, one should not become a husband. In fact, that is what uh, the Bhagavatam says. Uh, the Bhagavatam says uh, that uh, janani nasa syat, pita nasa syat, janani nasa syat, patir nasa syat, uh, uh, devo nasa syat. So one should not become a husband, one should not become a father, one should not become a mother. If one is not able to deliver one's dependence from the repeated birth and death within this material world, one should not take up the position of a superior, of a husband or a father or a mother or a demigod or a guru. One should not take that position until and unless one can deliver one's dependence from the cycle of repeated birth and death within this material world. So it's a very great responsibility. Now in Kali Yuga, nobody takes that responsibility. Nobody, no teacher, you go to college, you ask him, you are teaching me engineering, you are teaching me chemistry, physics, can you also uh, deliver me back to Godhead? He'll tell, Are what are you talking? <laughs> I have no idea of God, how will I deliver you? So teacher is not taking the responsibility. I am being paid a salary to teach you chemistry, physics and all. Don't ask about God and all here. In fact, it is in, in Kali Yuga, in the educational institutions, they are supposed to be very secular. You should, teachers should not teach anything about God to the students. This is the injunction. So, the, the Bhagavatam says, if you are that kind of a teacher, you don't become a teacher. You are not qualified to be a teacher. Don't take up that position. You become a teacher, provided you can deliver your students from the cycle of birth and death. You, you want to become a husband for what? For enjoying sense gratification with a woman. Then don't become a husband. Become a husband only if you are able to deliver your wife from the cycle of birth and death. The husband and wife, they beget children what? Just like that because they want their family to increase. Then please don't become uh, parents. Become parents only if you can deliver your children from the cycle of birth and death. So all these positions in the Vedic times were given with great responsibility. In Kali Yuga, nobody wants to take the responsibility, but everybody wants the respect. Children should listen to me, students should listen to me, wives should listen to me. What are you giving in return? Are you delivering them from the cycle of birth and death? That don't ask. But you give me everything. All the respect and reverence you give me. That will not work like that. If you are giving, like we all voluntarily, we subject ourselves to Srila Prabhupada. Why? Because he is delivering us from the cycle of birth and death. He is taking us back to Godhead. He is giving us Krishna Prema. Therefore, all of us are voluntarily serving Him. We are not getting any salary. We are not getting any career growth. We are not getting any big uh, 
uh, this one future our future is secure therefore we are doing we have no future securement we have nothing no security for our future why because we are all serving the spiritual master's mission voluntarily we have come and surrendered our lives to our guru shila prabhupad we are not making uh, arrangements for in my old age what will happen i should have a pension i should have somebody to take care of me my medical needs have to be taken care so let me make some arrangement none of those arrangements are there we don't have a salary we don't have any future uh, security for us none of these things are there so then how are we coming and uh, dedicating ourselves to shila prabhupad because prabhupad is taking the responsibility to take us back to garden so voluntarily we surrender ourselves to prabhupad so this principle works everywhere those who take responsibility they can command the respect of the people so this is the instruction what we can understand so because karada muni was such a great elevated spiritual personality devahuti naturally served him with great uh, reverence and and uh, with uh, intimacy with control of the senses with love and with sweet words and this is applicable for the spiritual master also and for the supreme personality of god at krishna also so i'll stop here if anybody has any questions or comments we can discuss so we'll stop here granthraj shrimad bhagavatam ki jai jagat guru shri la prabhupad ki jai nitai gor premanande hari hari bol